appreciate the Lord and not so glad to see everybody that's here. Most of all, glad of the Spirit of the Lord. It's been here tonight. I've a wonderful song. Most of all, I'm glad of God's presence. There's many wonderful people here. Uh, good brothers and sisters that we know, some we don't. But some dear friends that are here tonight. Go to call an old name. You probably know it for sure. Leave somebody down. I just will say this. It's so good to see everybody. Those that we do know and those that we don't know. So glad to see everyone here. Glad that you took time uh, out of your out of your evening to come be with us and help us. Yes. Uh, but most of all, Brother Dan, I'm glad that the Lord is here with us. Because Brother Jerry McKinley, we can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without his spirit. It is the one that, that, that brings the, the, the power. He's the one that brings the increase. He's the one that brings conviction. He's the one that speaks of Christ. Yes. Jesus said when the Comforter comes, he won't even speak of himself. Right. He'll speak of Christ. Right. So that's who we need and I, that's who I need, that's who you need. And I know we're taking up that offer and I'll let you get settled in a little bit here. Uh, but if you have your Bibles, be turning with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter uh, number 2, verse number 14. Okay, I'm going to try to preach from these scriptures. Uh, I'm going to go, go another place here in just a moment. Pray for us tonight. See not what's going on in our voice uh, since this morning. But and I know the Lord can touch us and help us and, and, and give us strength here tonight. But the book of Hebrews tonight, chapter 2, verse number 14, reads like this. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not of him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he, he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. Go to the first book of the Bible and not the book of Genesis. I'm going to do a little reading here. I do appreciate your patience. Book of Genesis chapter 3. Give you a moment to get there. We'll read from there in just a few moments. The word of God says in Genesis 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit of, that, of it thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God, walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the 
garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou givest with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat it. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Listen, verse number 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, that Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat it all the days of thy life. And read this down in verse number 22. And I know there's been a lot of reading. But the word of God is so important. Verse number 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the woman is become as one. And behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand. And take also the tree of life and eat. And live forever. Therefore the Lord God. Sent him forth from the garden of Eden. To till the ground. From whence he was taken. Thank you for reading along with us in the word of the Lord. There was a whole lot of reading tonight. But I feel like reading that little bit there. Amen. I, to, to be able to preach what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart. So we read to you here uh, in the beginning of the word of the Lord. Right here at the very first, Brother Sidney, we read that the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. We know that all things were formed by Him, they were made by Him, and they were made for Him. And He spoke to the darkness and He said, Let there be light, and there was light. Amen. He spoke and He created the fowl of the air. He spoke and He separated the land Amen. from the sea. He spoke. Amen. And He told the herbs to yield forth their fruit in due season. And everything, Brother Mitchell, that He created, Amen. He said He saw it was good. Amen. Amen. He created the cattle. Amen. He created the beast of the field. Amen. He created the creeping things. He created the fish in the sea. He created all these wonderful things. But what he done next, Brother Mikey, amen, was something that still to this day, I marvel at it when I read in the word of the Lord, Brother Brian. When I read how that this God, who is holy and who is righteous, what he done with this next preacher, Brother Sidney, amazes me to this day. He stooped down into the dust of the earth and he went to be here and he carved out a man and that man, I mean, he leaned down I and mean, into his nostrils. He gave him the privilege of being created in his likeness and in his image. But then he done the most remarkable thing that he didn't do with any other creature. He bent down and he breathed in that man's nostrils. And man became a living soul. It was perfect. It was beautiful. God took from that rib and he made woman bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And they were in that perfect garden with perfect beauty. Everything they needed. No sin. No sickness. No sorrow. No shame. And most of all, no death. Amen. You hear what I said? There was no death. Amen. I'm going to ahead and clear something up. I've heard it stated that God created man because he was lonely and he needed a friend. No, sir. 
Let me say it again. They sing about it. They talk about it. That God got lonely, Brother Morgan, and he needed a friend, so he created man. Not so. God was a man a million eons before that he was. And he always is and he always will be. And he had angels around his throne that worshipped him day and night. But why did he create this creature in his image? I'll tell you why. He wanted worship and he wanted glory. For glory and for worship is why he created man. He wanted to give this man something that was above every other creature. He give him a soul. Are you with me here? There's a soul living in every one of us. My mama always told me, she said, Charlie, take care of your body. Take care of your teeth. You're going to need them for the rest of your life. But friend, there's something that means more than that body. That means more than your flesh. That means more than the food you eat or the breath you breathe. There's a soul that's living in you and you better know where it's going to live because brother this body will go back to the dust from which it came but there's a soul brother sparks and it will live forever are you following me now he created man in his own likeness in his own image he breathed in his nostrils and man become a living soul. He gave him woman. She was the only other living soul until they had offspring. And the brother Sidney God gave them orders, divine orders. You can eat of every tree in this garden, of every tree and of every fruit you can eat of it. And then my brother Mitchell, he said, and then in the day that you eat of that tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, in the day you eat of that tree, it wouldn't maybe, it wouldn't negotiable. He said, in the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. And God gave them that command. But like the enemy does, he beguiled them. He deceived them. And here he comes subtly. And you know what he told her? He added one word. Amen to the word of God. He added one word to the only command that they had. Listen. You want to watch? He said, No, the Lord told you wrong. You shall not. Surely not. I give her one extra word. Lied to her. She accepted that lie. And Brother Brandon right then and there. And then when she took of that fruit off that tree, she began to Brother, I'm telling you the wages of sin is still there. I know I'm taking a while to get where I'm going, but the Lord has dealt with me so strong today. I mean, I could not get away from this. The wages of sin still that Brother McKinley, that's everybody in here's problem tonight. It's what everybody in here's running from tonight. You're going to die. It's once appointed a demand to die, and after this, the judgment. Amen. Amen. So, Adam eats of that tree. He eats of that tree. And in the cool of the day, what a beautiful thing it was, Brother Morgan, to see God walking in communion. Amen with his creation, Sister Marcia. What a beautiful thing it would have been to sing it. What a beautiful thing it was. Them walking as father and son. Them walking as father and friend. Father and worshiper. Amen. Them walking together. Amen. But here he comes in the cool of the day. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam was here, brother. Because sin brings shame. And he covered up that naked body. You know what they have never seen? We hold this priest. Preachers would have never had to preach for you to dress right. We'd have never knew the difference. We'd have been innocent hearted. But that naked body had now been revealed. Shame had gotten in his heart. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of that tree? The woman made me do it. Did you eat of that tree? The serpent made me do it. And God lines all three of them up. Being their God. Being their creator. And he says to that woman, because you've done this, you're going to suffer through child labor and ultimately, you've got to die now. Amen, Adam, because you've done this, amen, you're going to have to toll the land and ultimately, 
valley, now you got to die. But when he looked at that serpent and he said something that has never left me, and you may say, is this prophecy of Jesus? It most certainly is. He looked at that serpent and he said, you see that woman? You see that woman? You'll bruise the seed of that woman. You'll bruise her son's heel. But the seed of that woman will crush your head. He'll bruise your head. God, what a sad day it was. He thrust his creation out of that garden. He says, I can't look at you. I can't look at you anymore. I can't look at you anymore because, friend, God, now that you need to hear this because it's going to be important in a little while. God can't look at sin. He turns his face from sin. Now, there it went, brother. Mikey, on down to Noah's time, sin kept on getting out of control. And they had to die. On down into Abraham's time, here Abraham was, God gave him a covenant. Amen. Just like he gave to Eve, from your seed, there will be a deliverer. From the seed of man now, there's going to be a deliverer. And here he goes down through time. Amen. Right into David's day, into Solomon's day. Sin, sin. And sin and death over and over. Wars and murders. Amen. Fornication and adultery. Homosexuality. It kept getting worse and worse. Even to the point that God repeated in his heart that he ever made man. Amen. Listen. Man kept sinning. And as a result, they kept on dying. Amen. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. Lord, have your way to There had to be some way to escape that, or else you and I would have no hope Amen. in this house tonight. Amen. So I read to you here in the book of Hebrews about the secure glory to God in the world. I read to you in the book of Hebrews tonight about the secure of the soul. Amen. Read to you in the second chapter how that there was one who had to die. Amen. To overcome them. But Brother Mitchell, it wasn't you. You wasn't worthy. Brother McKinley, it wasn't you. You wouldn't worthy. Amen. It wouldn't you, Sister Marcia, or Brother Charlie, or Brother Sidney, or you, brother. We wouldn't worthy. Moses failed. David failed. Noah failed. Peter failed. Matthew fell. They all fell. And they all had to die. Glory, 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 glory. So in the meanwhile here, early on, God has to create a way. Now I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. God had to create a way that man could be forgiven. And the only means God could find was through blood. He wanted to smell blood being offered on that altar before he'd ever, amen, before he'd ever, amen, forgive man of their sins. So, Brother Paul, year after year, there was a priest had to come. And once a year, sister, he went into that holiest of holies and he would bring that gold. That kid, that, that little goat, and on one goat, he would pronounce the sins of the people. Amen. And then on the other goat, he would sacrifice its blood. And then its blood ran down on the altar and be consumed before God. And then a fit man would lead that other goat outside of the city that was bearing the sins of the people to dwell in lands inhabited. It was all over and over and over and over. But still man had to die. There had to be somebody that could defeat death. But here's the problem. Do you hear me? This is the problem I'm trying to get you to see. And the only a perfect and a holy individual without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. And it could be that atonement. Lord bless you. God commanded when you bring a lamb, it better not have no spots. It better be the first one. Amen. It better be the first one. It better be one of you, not your second best. 
It better be your best and it better not have no way to show you. I know maybe I'm bored some of y'all here, but I'm getting where I'm going with this. It had to be perfect. It had to be as if God himself, Haman was the one who died. But in order to save man, listen, they had to be perfect. But there was no man perfect. Amen. And in order to save men, amen, it had to be a man to do it. But there was no perfect man. That's the dilemma. That's the dilemma of this book. Man has to die and nobody could escape it. So what did the Son of God do? Oh, we're about to celebrate it. Hey, when I talk about Santa Claus and presents, I'm telling you about the Son of God. Amen. That's right. Brother McKinley, we can halfway through the story. Hey, when we see a, we see a broken, polluted, sacrificial system. It ain't working. They have to do it every year. There's no change. And what do we see, Sister Marcia? Hey, Amen. Down in the book of Matthew, we read in the book of Luke. Hey, Amen. About how there was a little baby born of a virgin, God's son, who was as much deity and as much power as he was. He become a man. Hey, Amen. He clothed himself in humanity. He had to learn to walk. He had to learn to feed himself. He couldn't clothe himself. But there it was. No wrinkle, no spot, no blemish. He was perfect. Look, right. these little babies sitting around here, Morgan and Brittany's baby. Brother McKinley and Sister Andy's baby. And then Brother Brandon and his wife's baby. That was Brittany's baby back there. I look at all these little babies sitting around. And you know what? And then every one of them were born, and I hate to say it like this, but every one of them was born with a clock down in their heart. Amen. Amen. That's a ticket to die. Because I promise you, if they live, they're going to go on to sin. They're going to go on to owe a debt that they can't pay on their own. But this baby here was perfect. Because yes, he was robed in clay. And yes, on one side, he's of the seed of Abraham. And on this side, amen, he's of the very essence of God himself. His beloved son. Amen. So what happened? He done something that changed his he said, Father, I have become a man. I have become the seed of a woman. The seed of a woman could only save the people. Amen. It only had to be a perfect, amen, spotless, amen, individual to do so. So here he comes, 12 year old, a walking in the temple and into talking about the scriptures with the Pharisees and the scribes, and he was perfect. Right. Eighteen years later, we were here. And here he comes, still perfect. Amen. Never a bad thought. Never. He was tempted. But no, brother, no. Perfect. Sister Esther, perfect. Perfect in mind. Perfect in deed. Perfect in character. Whereas none of you are. Amen. Right. Amen. So here he comes walking one day and John the Baptist is baptizing and John the Baptist looks out as he's coming. And he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, glory, glory. Glory to God. They baptized him in that river. Amen. And we see the Spirit descend like a dove. Amen. And we hear the Father say, Amen. This is my beloved Son. This day I'm pleased with him. The only one of Abraham's seed that ever got such an honor. Amen. Right. Brother Sparks, this is where it comes in. The priest was even defiled, Brother Rocky. He had to make atonement for himself. But our great high priest was drove into the wilderness, brother, Amen. by the Spirit of God. Amen. He was full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Spirit of God. You see, the Spirit of God can indwell none of us at that time. Amen. Only Him. Because if you've committed one sin, He can't dwell in you. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. I know that that's something I need to say about this. So they drive, the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. And he meets with that same one that he met with Amen. thousands of years before this. And Sister Brittany, here he comes just as beguiling and so 
seducing as he ever was. Amen. And he looks at Jesus and he says, Oh, you're hungry. Why don't you make these bread turn into stone? Or these stones turn into bread? But what did he do with the perfect upright heart? He said it's written. And then he took him on the pinnacle and he offered him everything in the kingdom of this world. But he said it is written. Well, well, well. Glory. And as he came out of that wilderness, he was perfect. He was tempted. And he was a priest that could have mercy. Glory to God. Well, well, well. Brother, can I feel the Spirit of the Lord right now as I'm preaching? I feel the Spirit of that man I'm preaching about. So here he comes out of that wilderness. He opens blinded eyes. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. Brother Morgan, he offers hope to the hopeless. Hey Amen. What did they do? Them self-righteous hypocrites that was full of dead men's bones. They took him and they said, do away with him. We don't want nothing to do with this thing. Come on now. He didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill it, brother. Glory, 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 glory. So here he comes. He ran one day riding on an ass on a young colt coming into the city. And they're crying, Hosanna! Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna! But brother, he was coming into certain death. Do you hear me? Amen. But that night in that garden of praying, Amen. he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Now listen. Listen, if it be your will, let this cup Pass for me. Amen. Sister Pauline, somebody said, well, that means he was scared to die. You think the Son of God himself was praying to be delivered from the nails? It wasn't the nails he was dreaming. I'm going to tell you what was in that cup. You know, every time you sinned, you stored up the wrath of God. Brother Jerry McKinley, you was a pastor's son. Brother Mitchell, you're a pastor's son. There's other people in here. You've been raised in the house of God. But do you know every one of us stands guilty before God? Amen. And every sin that we ever committed, amen, there was a little bit more wrath poured into that cup. Amen. God's just awaiting to unleash it on this wicked world. Amen. You know if you're here tonight and you're living in sin, you're storing up the wrath of God against amen. that man. To be poured out on you and this wicked world. Amen. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, you do not want to be here when the wrath of God's poured out. Right. I'm going to debate with you pre me in a post. And I'm going to tell you what I am. I am pre-wrath all the way. And you better be, brother, because the only thing that can let you escape it is the blood of Jesus. I will not be here for the wrath of God. I'm about to tell you why. Because that cup was a set there, brother, and it was just a spewing over with the wrath of God. Because God is love, and yeah, we like to talk about that, but behold the goodness and the severity of God. He's loving over here, but brother McKinley, he has a perfect hatred for sin. Because when you're dealing with God, you ain't dealing with a judge. Down the road, you're dealing with a just judge. He can't be bribed, and he can't be in his word for nobody. If you committed one little lie, but you helped a million people with money, it don't matter. He's just. He has to recompense it because he's perfect. We don't have to talk about that, God. That's the same God that's love, and because He's love, He has to hate. Lord, have Your way, Jesus. I love you, therefore I hate murder. I love life, I hate murder. I love little babies, therefore I hate abortion. You get my point? I love marriage, godly marriage, therefore I hate adultery and homosexuality. God hates. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Right. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He did do it. That whosoever, that liar, that thief, that drunkard, that homosexual, that man who, who committed so many ungodly sins, it's unspeakable to mention behind this pulpit, whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So what was in that cup? I heard a man say it, and it opened a lot of it. I began to look into it. It opened my eyes, Brother Sparks. It wasn't the nails. It wasn't the cat and nine tails. 
He wasn't spitting in his face. Amen. Or the plucking of his beard. Or the slapping through his face. Amen. Or the kicking. Or the laughing and the scorning that was in that cup. He didn't want to drink of his father's wrath. Because he'd never done anything to deserve it. Amen. The wrath of God is in that cup, brother. And Jesus said, but Father, I never have done anything to make you mad. But not my will. That you want to save him. Here's my head. Here's my head. Perhaps their sins on me is that priest with that goat. Put it on my head. Oh, yes. So they laid him into Pilate's hall. And they stripped him of his raiment. And they put a coat on him that's purple and scarlet. And then they put a crown of thorns on his head. They stoned him. They beat him. They accused him. And he started bleeding, brother. He started bleeding. They took him down there, amen, to the cat of nine tails. Sister Pauline, I felt the Lord praying for you. And he bent that back over. And he said, I'll heal them. And when they took that cat of nine tails, and they ripped the flesh off his back, and he blacked some more. Remember when I told you they had to be blood? Because the Levitical law said the lie sin the blood. Surely you ain't wore out with me yet, because I ain't even done. I'm just getting where I'm going. Come on, sorry. They beat his back. Then they took him and they put a cross on his shoulder. They smacked his precious face. Mary stood there that day and watched that little baby whose little hands she held in hers. Kissed them little hands. Kissed them little feet that night in that manger. Kissed his little face. And been held him close. Now that little head has blood running down it. And brother, you put them crown of thorns there. And I did too. Amen. Those little hands that she loved, now they're taking it and they stretched it out on a tree and he's still bleeding some more. Amen. They begin to beat them spots into them precious hands and them precious feet. And Mary stands up in the distance hearing the ping of them nails and that blood's are running out of his precious body. But believe me, brother, it wouldn't be spilled. I mean, I've never been of it. I mean, it was being collected by God. You just didn't see it, neither did I. That's right. He watched every drop of blood Amen. that hit the ground that day. Amen. He could tell you every drop. But he wasn't finished. Now here he is, Brother Stan. And he says, here's the worst part. He was willing to die for the Father. Amen. You don't believe he was? But here's where it really got bad for him. God said, every lie that this man told, I'm putting it on your head Amen. Every lustful thought you had, I'm just going to use you because I'm standing right here. I'm putting it on his head now. Every time you went months and weeks laying on the house of God, didn't love God like you should, he put it on his head. Every little time you gossiped against your neighbor and spread a discord among the brethren, put it on his head. Every adulterer, every fornicator, every liar, every homosexual, he put it on his head. Amen. Right. And because God's just, there had to be an atonement. Amen. And every sin I believe it was ever seen in the world, Brother Sparks, was such as blaspheming the Holy Ghost was put on that precious head. Amen. And God said, now here's that cup. I mean, I'm going to crush you. One hour went by. Two hours went by. Three and four and five hours went by. God was a crushing His Son. Remember what I told you? That God... <coughs> God can't look on sin. God had to turn his face because his darling son was a bearing his the sins of the world. I mean, it was the sixth hour. And about that time, here come that high priest. May glory to God to make atonement for the people. Here he is going into the holies of holies to make an atonement. But there's a cry comes out from that hill. It wasn't the thief's cry, brother. Hallelujah. It wasn't Mary's cry. But there's a cry comes from that hill and said, It is finished. Well, well, well. Brother, if that don't move you, there's nothing will. You're a dead issue. Amen. If the blood of Christ don't move you, 
you, you're dead. I'm telling you that blood ran down. That veil rent. And now God is a coming out. I will reconcile man. The creator of the stars. And the seed of that woman. One place. Same time. Same man. Are you listening? And they put the sin on his head. And that cry came. And that precious body that they said do away with. Joseph of Arlington comes. Said he craved that beaten, battered body. And it was dead. The only perfect individual, now he's dead. But oh, they placed him in that borrowed tomb. And three days later, came in on a Sunday morning, glory to God. Them angels sit down at that tomb. And God vindicates his son that day. And for your justification, now that arrested officer death, now that one that everybody has to fear, Brother Morgan, I can sing today. There ain't no grave can hold my body down, Sister Smart. You want to know why? That morning, there came another shaking brother. And here he come up out of that grave. He had paid the fine and he defeated death. And he said, I'm going away with that sacrificial system. It'll be me. Take me. I'll bear their sins. Oh, yes. Now, for as much then as the children are the partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself had been likewise took part of the same that through death Amen. Oh, yes. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Amen. Brother Tim Charles preached a while back at my home church at Kaywood. And he said, Why would you serve a man that don't even, because if you're living in sin, or if you're here tonight, you're a lukewarm Christian, you're serving the devil. Why would you say, and I love what Brother Tim Charles said, why would you serve a man that don't even have the keys to his own house? Glory, 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 glory. So here he comes walking out of that empty tomb, sis. The, the clothes are folded there neatly. That napkin are folded neatly. And here he comes a walking. And I believe if you'd have spiritually been listening, you could have heard them keys of Jacob as he stepped up out of that grave. Now the Spirit of God can dwell in man. Brother Mikey, if I leave here tonight and I get an accident and the corner pronounces me dead, don't you say I died. Brother, I begin to live. I begin to live. Why? I don't have to die. Jesus did. Well, 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 well. Glory, glory. I don't have to die. Somebody took my place. I'm going to tell you it's a shame among a bunch of holes people ain't more ain't needed than what they is preaching about the blood of our Savior. Don't get back to me all week. If you can't back in us, you're going to hell. That's the only reason I'm justified tonight is because of the work of, cross, of that cross. The only reason I'm justified tonight is because of the sufficient blood of Calvary. Brother, I'm telling you I have a hope and it's in Jesus. Amen. There's a cry coming from that throne. Come in. Come in. You don't have to die, but you can live. Amen. That leads me to the message. Jesus. I want you to hear what I got to read to you. Out of the book of Revelations, the third chapter. Listen close. Hey, man, I might just be 20, 30, 40, an hour or two hour more. I don't know how long I'll be. You stay right with me. Lord bless you. So Jesus is here, already been stationed back at the right hand of the Father. Amen. John, the revelator, was on the Isle of Tapas on the Lord's Day. Be turning to Revelation 3 in your books. It's the Lord's Day. He got in the Spirit. 
Church, I will tell you this. I will tell you there's one kind of church that he has. He ain't the God of a dead church. Let me say it again. He ain't the God of a dead church. He's got a living church and a beautiful bride. Glory, 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 glory. It's what I felt like leaving this revival off with. Amen. It said in the Revelation 3 and 1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. I want you, I want you to look up here now. He said, "You." And that's all I'm going to read. He said, "You have a name that you live, but you're dead." Now I want to tell you something. Some of you is tired of me. I know you are. Just stay right with me. I mean, he went down there at the bar talking to the harlot. Amen. Amen. He went down there talking to a drunkard. He went talking to the liar. Amen. He went talking to the false convert. Amen. He was talking to one of his churches. People, Brother Ryan, that knew him. He said, you know what? You're somewhere. They had done what was right. They dressed right. They looked right. I mean, they did all these things, Brother McKinley. But somewhere, they died. Now, church, I'm going to tell you. I mean, I'm going to tell you plainly. On the day of judgment, there will be no excuse for a dead Christian. With a dead desire. And a dead prayer life. And a dead heart. That's true. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say something. Brother Sparks says, give us the liberty to preach. And he said the truth last night. Sister Esther, he said, God didn't send him to tell us how to dress. Because we done no how. Amen. Bless your Lord. Most of us seem like we got all that down pat. Yeah. Uh -huh. They come to church and sisters, they hadn't put the scissors in their hair. Lord Thank Lord. God that they had. Yeah. Bless your Lord. But all they had was a name. Amen. Are you getting taught? Bless you, Lord. Are you tightening down on me now? Well, brother, you put the praise. Come on, brother. Come on. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank God that none of them brothers was up there with long hair looking like the world. Tattoos on their body, a cigarette in their mouth. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, have your Thank God Jezebel wouldn't on their piano looking like the world. Bless you, Lord. But they had a name that they lived. Everybody thought they had it all down pat, Amen. but they were dead. Amen. I'm going to tell you, brother, there's going to be more condemnation on that Christian's head than down there at the worldly church because Jesus made a way you no know, right to die. And once you partook of the bread of life, I mean, you don't have to live in death anymore. I come to tell you, he has a living church, a living church. If you're dead, I mean, it's not the will of God. There's more of this than a name. Amen. I go to church. Amen. I pray. I am in the preacher. If all you've got to name you live, you're dead right where you sit. I'm telling you, there's more of this than a name. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave. I refuse to abide in death. I refuse to live in sin. I refuse to be a slave. Well, well, well. What used to be man's greatest enemy? Brother Sparks, when it comes to me, when it comes to visit me, I'm going to bend this world a last to do, and I'm going to be with him where I can live forever. I don't have to fear death. I can embrace it. It's no longer my enemy. It's my friend. I get to go where I'll never die. Why? Because I started living that night that he saved my soul. Had not I repented and believed. Right. Oh, I feel like the preacher was right here inside yeah, this place. All they had was a name. They didn't have to die. I'm going to tell you now, if you're living in sin, all you have is a name. Amen. All you have is just a name. 
it's going to take you to hell. These people in here tonight, I know I'm preaching to a few people. I feel like I could come up to a few people. You can wear the name. You can wear the label. You can come to church. But if all it is is a name, you're dead. There's a sister I won't say who she is. Won't call out her name. But there's a sister right here tonight that told me this past week. And she was brought up in a church that used to live good. Dress right, walk right, live right. You know what she said? She said they got good and worldly. Probably charismatic too. And she said, so you know what I've done? She said, I, I migrated somewhere where there was holiness. And I'm going to tell you, she got a good pastor too. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Hey, Amen. they are already living in sin. If you leave the principles of God, they're living in sin. But you can come here and you have everything down pat, dot the I, and cross the T. But if you've lost your love, if you've lost your zeal, if you've lost your prayer life, you're dead. You're dead. It's just a name. It's just a name. You know what keeps me alive, Brother Mitchell? That Spirit of God, man, that indwells me because the blood of Jesus made me worthy. Hallelujah. Do you know where a lot of our people's going now? Man? Paul said, "This I say then." And I'm, I'm not. I quote this often, but I believe I've quoted here. But just you bear right with me. He said, "This I you will know what'll keep you out of death. You know what'll keep you out of dying." He said, "This I say then." Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the, for the Spirit and lust is against the flesh, and the flesh wars against the Spirit, and these two are contrary one to the other, and they fight against one another. I mean that you cannot do the things you would. But he said, if you are in the Spirit, listen, if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. I'm not in bondage anymore. I'm not in condemnation anymore. Sister Esther and the 17 workings of the flesh are this, Sister Kim, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uncleanness, idolatry, emulation, and then rash, rash, seditions, heresies, malice, Indians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, witchcraft, and moons, and brethren, such like, as I told you before, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith. And against such, there is no law. There is no condemnation. Because they that are in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with the lust thereof. Amen. If I say I live in the Spirit, let me also walk in the Spirit. Amen. Not being desirous of lame glory. Amen. Not provoking one another in one another. Amen. You live in your flesh. I'm going to tell you, a fleshly church will die. A fleshly man will die. But if you walk in the Spirit, you've got life. And Paul said, this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that you know how to possess your vessel under holiness. Peter said, and now that you're a divine partaker of His nature. Amen. Diligently, give it all diligence. Add to your faith. Amen. Virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and the temperance and the godliness and the godliness brotherly kindness and the brotherly kindness charity and if you do these things you shall never fall. Amen. The will of God. I want to tell you, everybody listen. The will of God was never that you get saved. You come and find you a church and you park it in that pew and drive and die. Amen. He said, it's your will, Paul said. It's the will of God that you abound the more and more. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can think or ask according to the power that worketh within us. Yeah. So you mean he saved me to take me beyond that veil? He most certainly did. And I'm talking, we got a lot of people that are satisfied. Right where they are in a lot of okay. And this may hit you. But a lot of Christians, they got just enough of Christ in their life 
So they think that they come to church and get just enough good feeling that they ain't just, a, come on now, just to be bitter and hateful the rest of the week. To come to church and talk about being too cold, too hot, the music's too loud, the preacher preached too long. Friend, I'll tell you what your problem is. You ain't alive. Because when I got saved, I come up out of that altar. I was a new creature. I walk different. I talk different. My desires changed. My mind changed. And rather, I ain't got no plans of stopping. I want to go more. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Amen. In the Word of God, <coughs> we're sitting there, amen, up, 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 outside of the gates of the series, and they looked at one another, and they said, why set we here till we die? Inside that city was food. Inside that city was shelter. Why would you die when the throne of God says, I've made the way, i paid the vine. You can have as much of me as you want. Amen. Bless you, Lord. You come get it. Yep. You can abound more and more and more and more. Glory to God. You know what I noticed? God's called me. I'm a young minister. Young preacher. I ain't been in this long. I'm going to tell you something I've noticed. I'm not being critical. But as a young minister, I've been evangelizing for, for a little while now, going different places. I find that we got people that can stand up and say, I've been saved 30 years. But there ain't nothing more different about them. And that miserable man sitting on the bar stool and not trying to break his trouble away. Yes. You just do it on Facebook all day long. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory. Help him, Lord. Help him. They sinners probably go to church more than some of these so called Christians do. That's right. But they still wear that name. Oh. They wear that name. But, brother, when I felt Christ, I felt life. Help when him. I felt Christ, I began living. Right. You wish that he was 10 year old, but he called me to repentance. I turned from my sin, I placed my trust in Him. I've been a brand new creature. Hey, Paul, you can quote the Bible. You can quote Genesis, Amen, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The first five books, you can quote them. You was a Hebrew of a Hebrew, and you were a Pharisee of the law. You was of the straightest, in other words, strictest sect of Pharisees. But you was dead, brother. You was dead. But one day on the road to Damascus, that risen Savior said, Paul, even Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for me to kick against the bricks, but brother, I ran. Well, oh, Lord, some of you's bored with me, but that's all right. I ran when they took him on down to him into a street called Straight, and Ananias come walking in after about three days, and he got full of the Holy Ghost, and straightway he began preaching Jesus in the synagogues, brother. He began to live. He began to live. Amen. You can live tonight. They hated that man so much. And Brother Paul, they stoned him. They led him out of the city and they stoned him. There was something living in Saul. Excuse me, his name Paul. God. Paul. There was something living in him. Brother McKinley, I heard you say one time them stones begin to shake and rattle. And I'd see that hand reaching up out of them stones. And I'd see him walking back in that city saying, I'm declaring holiness unto the Lord. I'm declaring this risen Savior to these people. You don't have to die. You can live. I said you can live. I heard a Baptist man say a lot this. He said the greatest day of idolatry in America is Sunday morning. Are you listening? Sunday morning. He said because people gather out all across the country to sing about a God they don't know. And they hear some man preach about a God that they don't know. Brother, I'm going to say it. Uh, these people are even in this area. Everybody I talk to is a Christian. But you got people that say, I used to live that old time way. But God showed me something different. He showed me I can live a different way. Brother, you ain't got the same thing you started out with. If you started in holiness, you'll finish in His holiness. I'm telling you, you can finish right. You don't have to be a dead church. You don't have to die. Amen. 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 Tell you what's wrong with a lot of people. They stop going to that throne like we preached last night. 
Amen. Brother Lord, had already, we're in the year that King Uzziah died. Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord. Amen. And his glory filled the temple. The train of his robe filled the temple. Amen. And he said, Oh, woe is me. For I am undone. I'm going to tell you what was up there now in that. And this is, we, don't, we don't get many glimpses. Because brother, brother Mikey, nobody's ever truly seen God live. We don't get many glimpses into that throne room of grace. Amen. But I do know this much, Sister Esther. When Isaiah said, Lord, I'll speak for you. But I got unclean lips. One of them seraphims. They cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. With two wings it flew, with two wings it covered its eyes, two wings it covered its feet. It flew down there to that hot coal. I know somewhere in that throne room, there is a coal burning. There is a fiery furnace burning, and it has hot coals in it, brother. You won't sanctify it. You don't believe me that's in there. Just go to Isaiah 6. You can read about it. And they were so hot. I'm going to tell you, God ain't got a dead church. He, he, if you ain't got some fire about you, you're dead. That angel took them tongues and he reached down into them coals of fire that was before the throne of God and he took that and he pressed that up Amen. against Isaiah's lips and I read where that man went on to prophesy for the kingdom of God. You know what we need? We need to pray God. I don't want to be there. I left that life behind. Give me some of that fire that's on your throne. He's more to this than a name, church. He ain't coming back for a dead church. He's coming back for a church that's ready, that's alive, that's full of his spirit. Amen. That's the church my Jesus is coming back for. He come to this earth. He lived sinless. He took the fire. He paid it all. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave. Now I've been given life. It's up to me what to do with it. You don't have to be dead. If you're here tonight and you're lost, you don't have to be dead. If you're here and you're lukewarm, and I hope, I believe I'm preaching to some people to lukewarm. My heart, Bless you, I feel that. Bless you don't have to be there. Hallelujah. You can live. I read you about another church at, at Ephesus. He said, You've done everything right. You've labored. Now listen to this. They labored. Amen. They had patience. This is Jesus' words. They had borne. They had pressed. And they hated the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Amen. But they had left that first love. Amen. That, and I read where the Word of God says that love is as strong as death. That it's such a fire that many waters cannot quench love. They left that. Amen. They left that. If they should have died but against the holiness people, I believe it's this. We've got everything down pat. We've dotted our eye, we've crossed our T's. But we'll, if we ain't careful, we'll have a form of godliness. And we'll deny the power. Amen. Church is a power of God. And it'll do what you, you would say we need to win the lost. You know how you win the lost? You get a hold of some power and you can win the lost. Amen. You get a hold of the fire and you can win the lost. Amen. Bless you, Lord. The sister Esther, I'm finding, this is what the enemy's done. Are you listening? Just like in the Garden of Eden, he's come so subtly. Amen. And he's whispered in people's ears. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's talked to them. Yeah. And Brother Mikey, he's persuaded them. Yeah. And that soul that once walked with God, my Lord and my Live God. with God. Walked with Him in the cool Bless of day. You, now it's dead. Bless you, Lord. I seem like tonight you've been a little quieter than you was the other night. Bless you, Lord. And I'm going to tell you, you can wear your name in the hell if you want to. Amen. Holiness is the nature and the character of God. It's Amen. perfect. Amen. But you can wear that label and you can burn in hell with a rapist. Amen. You can wear it out into the depths of hell if you ain't careful. With feelings down in your heart, bitter and angry. Amen. You ain't been to church in three weeks, but you don't care. 
Come on, man. It's just a name. It's just a name. When that's what your when that's what your salvation becomes. You have nothing. But a form. And I can read to you about people that went through a form every Saturday. And they they fasted twice a week. And they pay tithes of everything they had. But they omitted the weightier matters of the law. Amen. Judgment, faith, and mercy. Amen. They brought in their garments. They wore the word of God on little fragments before Amen. their eyes. But it never got down in their heart. Amen. They wore little boxes on their arm and brought in them. They had the commandments of Amen. God right on them. And they wore it right in the hand. My Lord. Because Jesus Christ said, what they say to do, do it. Right. But they're like white sepulchers, yeah. sepulchers. They're whited on the outside, yeah. but inwardly, Brother McKinley, they're full yeah. of yeah. dead men's bones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, outwardly, they look so good. Yeah. But they wore that label right in the head. Oh, I'm preaching the truth to you. Bless you Lord. They wore that label right in the hell. But we preached it last night. Here lately, Brother Jeremy Keeley, I preached about it a little bit at your church last week. Preached about it. I mentioned it at Redford over the weekend. Mentioned it here this week. But I've not been sick of God lately. Just saying, Lord, give me a sermon. Give me a message. But I've been praying lately, and I have been begging the face of God. Please, God, let me see your face. 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 I pray today, I said, Lord, let me look you eye to eye. We preached that last night, and then we went out to eat with some brothers and sisters. And Brother, and brother Mike Galvin testified so good here last night about that one day. He looked across that table at me, and he said, Brother Charlie, you mentioned that. He said, let me tell you an experience that I have with God. And I know some of you is bored with me. And I, 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 God has moved on me tonight. He's dealt with me all day long about this. Oh, you just ride on out just a few more minutes. Hey, Lord. Bless you, Lord. And he looked across that table at me and he said, Brother Charlie, he said, I had an experience with the Lord over the weekend. He said, Saturday, I needed to get some things off my mind. So I went outside and I began to rake them leaves. And he said, I was troubled. You know, I just need to get my mind off life. So I was working. And like, like you do through the day, you know, you begin to talk to the Lord. And he said, Lord, in your word, I read it. For David was a man after your own heart. He said, God, how can I know your heart? Church, I'm telling you, the enemy, he's subtle. Just like he was in that garden. He's got a lot of our people. He's got a lot of Christians. I'll tell you what he got them with. He'd give them a nice new car. Hey, but he'd give them a big nice house. They'd fill their bellies up. They eat, they drink, they're merry, and they're on the way to hell. You see what's in his hands. I'm so sick of seeing a church world seeking what's in his hands. I want to look him in the face. Forget about the fish and the loaves. Brother, you'll digest them and you'll be hungry again. I'm looking for the bread of life, Brother McKinley. Brother Morgan, he said, God spoke to me. He said, how can I know your heart? Church, if you want to live, you have to know the heart of God. The heart of God hung there on that tree that day. He defeated death. Right. The wind began to blow, and like God does, he'll come boisterous or loud. He didn't have nothing. He didn't have a choir behind him or nothing like that. But he heard that voice. He spoke to him. He said, "God, how can I know your heart?" And he said, "My word." The wind kept blowing, and he kept hearing that voice. My word. My word. Brother, I'm telling you, when I begin to turn these pages, I'm seeing the very breath of God spoken right out of His mouth, come right from His lips, spoken right off His tongue. You want to know His heart? You need to know His word. Who is that word? There's three that bear record in heaven: the Father, and then the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, friend, the Word of God brought life. He dwelt among men, and they were seen not, but we beheld His glory. But as many as received him. He gave them power. And they become the sons of God. Amen. Well, well, well. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. I ain't got a damn religion. 
religion. I've got a dead message. I've got a lively hope. I've got a risen Savior. You don't have to die. You can lay up. Amen. Amen. Bless your name. Amen. Oh, glory, Lord. Amen. Those thoughts? You asked us last week if we felt like we wanted to come back Sunday through Wednesday. Amen. I'm glad we did. Yes. A church, I come to tell you, he ain't coming back for a church that's wearing a name. Amen. He's coming back for a church that's got that life in their heart. Have a name you live, but you're dead. You don't have to be dead. Amen. You can be alive. Amen. I said you can be alive. Amen. 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 Lazarus was once alive. Oh, four days of being dead. That voice spoke beyond that tomb. Amen. He come walking out there living. I feel like there's some of you out here tonight. You need to hear that voice speak to you and say live. Hey, but when you live, when them dry bones in the valley hear that voice say live, bone will join the bone, marrow to marrow, and he'll breathe. And they stood up and exceeded great mighty army. I'm telling you, you can be alive today. Amen. Be alive. Somebody come to this piano. I'm preaching tonight. There's a life that we can have. It's only life. That priest would inspect them sacrifices that they would bring. He would dissect them. You know the words that this divide's coming and going. Brother, the sacrifice you brought to church will you tonight. What is that sacrifice? Well, he beseeched us, Paul did, to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So it's sacrifice. You're that sacrifice. You've been a living sacrifice today. And that sacrifice you presented, I'm going to tell you what God does with his word. He does exactly what that priest does with the, with the, with the sacrifice they would have. He dissects it right to the heart Amen. to see if it's well enough. I'm going to tell you, he'll dissect you right down to your heart Lord, just to see whether you are with him. If he finds a dead Christian, I don't know the way to put it to you. They're not going with him. And I don't want to be in that room. I want to be a leader. Well, I feel like I lost about half of you 30 minutes ago. And I'm going to tell you I preached you in my heart tonight. I'm glad how God's moved this week. I'm going to tell you you don't have to be dead. You can be a leader. I feel like the Lord has done what, what he sent us to do. I'm, I'm sure appreciative of Brother Sparks for inviting us. I'm so glad of God that I feel like this has been for the church. I've seen revivals that was for the lost. I've seen revivals that was for the lost man. And I'm going to tell you, I feel like God sent us here to preach for the Christians this week. Oh, oh, there's every hour we need to get stirred this day. Amen. We need that life. Sister Esther, I've heard you about every night on that altar. I've heard you a weeping and a calling out to God. And I saw you touching God. That's what it's going to take, church. You want to find life, you'll find it right there. You'll find it through his word. I'm going to tell you, I found. I, I mentioned this before. But I was in a service a while back. In a wonderful church among some wonderful people. But they were some of them sitting around there. And they were on their about fifth, fifth or sixth vacation this year. And uh, they, they drive in nice new vehicles and all that garbage. And they're well off and happy. And I watched that white-haired man of God get up behind that pulpit and say, I feel like preaching. And I watched him sit and talk and giggle and laugh. I'm talking so much commotion was going on in that church. It was ungodly. It disgusted me about what I said. And I'm going to tell you like this. When trouble comes and their foundation is shook and they're moved. It'll be because they didn't build on this good word of God. Amen. I felt like all week long, the emphasis has been the word of God. Amen. The life is in the word. Amen. His face is in the word. He is the word. If you want life, it's in this word. It's in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you stay and rest yourself, we're going to open this altar. We're going to let you pray. I'm going to be honest with you. God didn't send me here this week to preach on how to rest because everybody out looked at it. That that comes here knows how to grace. Lord, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you about a salvation you can get a hold of. You will not dress like the world. Amen. Yeah, it will take scissors out of your hand, but I'll tell you something else it'll do. It'll bring that dead heart back to life, Christian. You can boast of how strict you believe all day long, but if your heart's dead, Amen. you're in trouble right where you are. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now what we need back in the house of God is that life. Amen. 
If we're going to open this altar, we're going to let you pray. If you're here and you're lost, this altar's open. All right. If you're here and you're far from God, you're lukewarm, you're cold, we're going to open this altar. If you would, come and pray. Lord, we love you.